Hello and welcome. The title of the message today is Associations and IKT. But let's begin by affirming together our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in my life and the universe, God. I invite you now just to take a deep breath and then relax and release that breath, bringing your awareness to this present time in this present space. And so it is. So, associations and IKT. At first, you might be wondering, what is this IKT? Because associations, well, that's a word I can look up in the dictionary, and I know kind of what that means. But IKT is an abbreviation or an acronym um, like they use in, in the military quite often. IKT is one that you hear in unity quite a bit, and it stands for I know that. And associations are very similar to this idea of I know that. And I'd like to start by giving you a short joke. What do you call a dice whose opinions are formed by their preconceived uh, notions, their preconceived ideas? A prejudice. So this joke kind of brings in an idea, a further understanding of what we mean by associations and IKT, because aren't prejudices an example of how we already have this idea formed in our mind so that we know something that we don't really know yet? So what these associations are, are filters that are pre-programmed in our consciousness. In other words, neural patterns that are etched into our brain and our neural network that's throughout our body that limit our ability to see what is going on around us. If we already know it, then our eyes are not open anymore. If we are going by our associations, our preconceived notions, like the dice from the joke, then we can't see what's in front of us because we already know what it is. So these associations can color our experience, they can determine our reaction in advance. And we have no hope of freedom because these associations already have us locked into a response, a behavior, and even feelings thought patterns, gut reactions that are already determined in advance by our preconceived things that we have learned in history that may not even have application to the present situation. And it's these preconceived notions that are then determining our behavior. So it looks like that these associations are something negative that we need to get rid of, or at least that we don't need to let dominate our consciousness. And for the most part, that's true. But there are associations that are part of us that are useful for our spiritual growth. 
We have associations that are associated. <laughs> we have associations that were brought into our neural patterns by our spiritual study. Not only what we've read, what we've learned from classes, but what we've learned by observing ourselves. And these associations can be very valuable and need to be reinforced in us. It's these associations that are allowing us to become free of all of the other preconceived notions that are limiting our behavior. So how do we reinforce the associations that are useful for our spiritual growth while taking away the power of those other associations over us? How can we free ourselves of the associations that are limiting while strengthening those associations that are helping our spiritual growth. There's a tool I spoke about last week when I talked about salt and the quantum field. And it's one of the most simple and basic, but very powerful, unity teachings. And that is the idea of denials and affirmations. You see, by practicing the denial of these associations that are limiting us to have power over us and affirming truth into our consciousness, we begin to strengthen, we continue to strengthen those patterns of our neural network that are valuable to our spiritual growth. It is part of this idea we have in unity that's sometimes taught as fake it until you make it. And what it means is, is that we continually are reading, meditating on truth ideas, and bringing these ideas into our consciousness because they are reinforcing positive, in terms of our spiritual growth, positive associations. Well, they take away the power of the limiting associations that keep us from seeing. Denying an association has power over me. Denying that a situation out there has power over me. That's the use of a denial. It's not denying the situation exists. Because it's out there plain as day. But it doesn't have power over me. My previous associations about that situation do not have power over me. And that is the denial. And the affirmation is one of truth principle. I am a spiritual being. I am a child of God. And I do not let this outer appearance have domination over my consciousness. I am free to choose what I hold in my consciousness. I can remember as I had the COVID for the first time, as a few years ago now, but it hit me hard and I had a high fever for days. And I can remember lying there in bed, covered up, shivering, even as I was burning with a fever. I was having mild hallucinations and seeing pictures of how this disease, how the Inflammation was invading my body. I could see concentrations of it with a visual. And I remember a thought coming over me as I felt so bad that this might be the end. 
And I remember at that moment affirming my wholeness. And then laughing at the paradox of how crappy I felt versus this positive affirmation of my wholeness. But with this affirmation and with this denial of this disease to have power over me, this seeming paradox, I just laughed out loud literally at what this situation was. And I went back to sleep. And I really believe that that was a turning point. That at that moment, my body was able to turn around and begin to have domination over this virus that was invading. So there was this paradox between what was going on in the relative world, which was this disease, this virus invading my body, as opposed to what was going on in the absolute world, which was my wholeness. And it caused me to laugh. And it also brought about a change in the relative realm as my body took that energy of life and began to overcome this virus. There were associations in me of what this virus could do. They were brought in by the news, by the people around me, and all of the fear that was going on. But with a positive affirmation, I was able to turn that around. And that's what I invite you to do. That is our practice. Even with the little associations, any association that we can see in ourself that is binding us, that is keeping us from seeing the truth, that is keeping us from seeing anew what is going on around us. I want to share a scripture with you comes from the Gospel according to John in chapter 10. I'd like to read one really short sentence in verse 30 from the Lamsa translation from the original Aramaic language that Jesus spoke. The verse reads, I and my Father are of one accord. This is a verse that was explained further during my Aramaic School of Light sessions by Dr. Rocco Errico, who was a student of George Lamsa. And he explained this word that's translated as I here isn't simply I. In the Aramaic, the word is inana. And if it meant, if it was to be translated as I, it would just be ina. But it's not. It's ina na, which means I, I. I, I, and my Father are of one accord. And that word accord can be seen as one mind. I, I. I've talked about this before. I, I. When my nafsha self, is in harmony with my Ruah self. Self with a lowercase s, in harmony with true self with a capital S. That's Ina Na. This relationship and my Father, our source, God, are in one accord, are in one mind. They are in alignment with one another. And this is the state that we're going for. And our associations that limit us are blocking this harmonious relationship between our personality 
and our true self, our essence. We can watch what's going on in our consciousness and notice when we are bringing in these associations, associations about what's going on out there, as well as associations that are going on about our own inner self. These associations that limit us. And then replacing them, as we notice them, with associations that are useful to our spiritual growth. Things that we plant in our personality on purpose to emphasize and reinforce truth ideas. We do it sometimes by the use of denials and affirmations. Emily Cady has two different chapters in her Lessons on Truth. There's a lesson on denials and a lesson on affirmations, and I find them very valuable for my own personal growth. You can find Lessons in Truth out there on the internet for next to nothing. You can buy it from Amazon or from unity.org in the shop. This technique of denials and affirmations begins to reinforce those associations that are helpful on our spiritual path, to bring us into this harmony of ina-na, when our nafsha self and our ruah self are in one accord with God, with the one mind. And they take away those other associations from being dominant over us. They free us from the limiting associations that come from IKT. This, I know that already, and I don't even have to listen anymore or observe what's going on. I don't want you to take my word for this, but I do invite you to try it out. Noticing in your own self when these associations that limit are coming into play. Practicing denials and affirmations so that you begin to reinforce those associations that are useful for your spiritual growth. I thank you for your time and I ask you now to practice one of those positive affirmations that we often use in unity. We call it the prayer for protection. And let us affirm that together now. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever I am, God is. Thank you.